I'm Larry Anglisano reporting for Kit Plains Magazine here at Lockwood Aero Sebring, Florida. And no, that's not a turbine power advanced RV9 behind me. It is an interesting project that's been in the works down here at Lockwood. Pretty soon going to be a firewall forward kit to install a Rotax 916 IS engine in the RV9. And uh, Phil Lockwood's going to tell us about the project. Yeah, so we've been working on this project for several years now. And the idea was to take the 915 and the 916 and match them up to the RV9. And the RV9 is a particularly good candidate amongst the fleet of Vans aircraft designs because it was really designed to work with lighter, smaller engines uh, and, and be more efficient. Um, it uses a special John Ronks designed airfoil, laminar flow airfoil. It's not an aerobatic airfoil. Um, and so it really makes it an ideal cross-country airplane. Um, with that in mind, uh, we started working with Vans and uh, uh, they, they were very interested in us trying to develop that firewall forward package for the airplane. And uh, we're now on our second design. The first one, uh, we learned a lot from it, uh, but we didn't get all the results that we wanted. We had some, um, some pitch stability issues and uh, we weren't cooling as well as now. So this is a completely new design, second generation, second try, and it's working quite well. So we have the stability we need. We've been able to complete all the spin testing uh, and, and get very good results. Uh, we have the engine placed where it needs to be. It is still quite a bit forward, even though this airplane was designed for, for smaller, lighter engines. We still had to move the propeller forward about 14 inches to get uh, a really perfect CG setup. And we are ideal. Uh, and then the performance of the package is very compelling. Uh, so, the, the, of course, the number everybody wants to hear is how fast will it go. And, we can, reach, uh, we can reach cruise speeds of 190 knots at uh, 19,000 foot density altitude on about eight and a half gallons an hour. But even at lower altitudes, it's still fast and it's still very efficient. Uh, and of course, the takeoff and climb performance is also pretty stellar. Um, uh, so and then you have the lighter weight. It's even with the longer cowl and the longer engine mount and all the things it takes to do that, we're still about 80 pounds lighter than the Lycoming installation. So 80 pounds more useful load is nice to have. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess to summarize the project now with this setup, we have very efficient cooling. Uh, we have a good CG situation. We are lighter than the stock RV9 with a, with a 160 Lycoming. We're considerably faster. We're more efficient. Um, and we have better takeoff and climb performance. So it's really, it's, I see a lot of, uh, call them speed mods, where you're hoping to get two or three knots. And at, at some altitudes, we're as much as, I should say, 40 knots faster than the the 160 horse Lycoming powered RV9. I mean, that's just huge. It's, it's like a whole nother airplane. Uh, and then the downside, I mean, there just, there, there really isn't any that I can think of because you can't even see the engine cowling when you're in the airplane. Like if, if you were to jump from one to the other, you, you can't even tell that the long nose is out there and the way it handles, uh, it's the same. One of the areas where you can really excel with the 915 and 916 is if you're able to really optimize your cooling efficiency. The 915 and 916 engines from Rotax have, uh, they have a, a cooler required for the liquid. You have to cool the cylinders, which are air-cooled. The heads are water-cooled. You've got an oil cooler, so you've got to cool the oil. You've got an intercooler to cool the uh, compressed air coming out of the turbocharger before it goes into the engine. You have an inlet for the, for the turbocharger, so you have to supply that. And uh, of course, then you might have cabin heat and, and other things. So there's quite a bit of air going into that cowling. How do you do that the most efficient way possible? What we decided to do was uh, have a single inlet and uh, working with our aero guy, um, Andy Chiavetta, he was really 
pushing for everything coming out of that single inlet. And so that's what we've been able to achieve. So you've got the oil cooler in the center, they are going on the, uh, on the right side. There's an integrated channel in the cowling that takes it to a very large uh, radiator. Uh, where we can slow that air down and take it through the, the uh, large radiator and get the maximum heat transfer with minimal drag. The air going on the left side of the cowling goes to the intercooler and also feeds the engine. Uh, and then you've got an inlet on the top here which goes up and cools the cylinders through this baffle. And then you have other individual lines which go to cool different components on the engine so that we know all the electronics are being cooled uh, and to the correct temperature. So that's part of how we're able to really keep our cooling drag very low. And we don't need a we don't need any cowl flaps. And of course, the outlet uh, for the cowling is also very cleaned. And so you can see uh, down there what that looks like. And um, yeah, so it's all about you know taking this super clean uh, airframe that that has a relatively large cabin uh, compared to a lot of the planes that that would be uh, that this would compete against, and uh, and get tremendous speed with the landing gear down 100 and 190 knots. True with the gear down, it's pretty amazing. Back here, you can see uh, this wing is unique to the RV9. And that again, it's a it's a John Ronks design laminar flow. It's a longer span, narrower cord. They brought the leading edge of the wing back, and then it has uh, much larger, much more effective flaps, um, which which uh, also help the uh, the short field landing and takeoff capability. So it's really a great combination. Planes easy to fly, still has great agility, great stability and uh, phenomenal performance. Sure, um, this airplane, uh, it doesn't have a lot of interior in it, although with the, they're not in there now, but we're using Oregon Aero uh, seat cushions, which, which have some weight to them. With the Oregon Aero uh, seat cushions in there, we are at a, just under a thousand pounds empty and the max gross is 1750. Uh, so we have a, a good solid 750 pound useful load. We also have a great CG situation, so it's, it's quite easy to use the 100 pounds capacity in the, in the fairly large baggage compartment um, and, and stay within uh, CG, even with heavy pilots on board. Uh, that's the dorsal fin, so we added that to improve the yaw stability uh, with the extended nose. And, you know, most airplanes have a dorsal fin. Vance doesn't typically use them, uh, but we didn't really lose any speed uh, when we added that dorsal fin, so there was no downside in performance. And um, it, it gave us the uh, stability we needed to, to go into spin testing and, and uh, be confident that we'd be able to recover. And it worked, so we have really good spin recovery. There are a number of things that make this engine pretty interesting for a project like this. It's, of course, very lightweight, it's very efficient, um, and it's easy to operate. Part of the reason that it is so efficient is that it runs uh, Lena Peak EGT, and it does that automatically. So we know that if you get that wrong, it can be a problem. So in this case, the uh, computer always knows when it's safe to go lean a peak and it does it automatically. Uh, it's also capable of maintaining maximum power, the 160 horsepower, up to 15,000 foot density altitude. That's pretty impressive. And that essentially means that any airport in the US, even on the hottest day in the summer, you're gonna have full takeoff power available to you. Um, we, uh, we recently posted a video on our website uh, about a comparison we did at Telluride uh, with a uh, stock 160 horsepower RV9 and the, the, the differences were quite uh, amazing. It was, it was a fun, uh, fun trip out there. So uh, as an example of the kind of performance we get, we could take off in this airplane, come back to max continuous RPM, which is 5500 on the engine, 
and then uh, bring the throttle back until we get eco mode. And it'll tell you on the engine monitor, you're in eco. That means it's just gone lean a peak. We're still producing a lot of power at that point. Uh, but our fuel burn is down to somewhere between 8.8 .8 and 8.5 .8 gallons an hour. And then I can climb right to 19,000 feet at that power setting and never touch the throttle, never touch, there's, of course there's no mixture, and my fuel burn and my power is constant. And I can get, I can cruise climb at 120 knots indicated and still have a really strong rate of climb. And then level off and I still leave the power there and I just cruise there. So this engine uses a fuel injection system that was developed for the 100 horsepower uh, 912 IS. They use that same type of fuel injection system on the uh, 915 and now on the 916 IS. So it uses a, a, a dual path ECU, fully redundant, two computers in there, one for what they call lane A and one for lane B. And then it uses a power distribution box, we call it the fuse box. Um, and so you have two internal generators, which are oil cooled. One generator runs all the electronics on the engine. So even though this engine, the electronics are 12, 14 volt powered like an automobile, they're not powered by the battery. They're powered by the engine. The only time they're powered by the battery is on initial startup. After you start up, the engine will uh, power all the electronics off of the, the, the B generator, which is the larger of the two. Um, that's pretty cool because that's not normally the generator that it runs off of. That's the one that provides power to the airframe for your avionics and to charge your battery. But it wants to make sure it can run on that generator because that is its backup for flight. Uh, after you run it up to 2600 for six seconds or so, it will switch and it will switch to generator A and then uh, generator B will be handed off to the airframe and you'll see your battery voltage start to come up. Uh, at that point, the engine's running on generator A. Uh, if you were to have a generator A failure in flight, then it would automatically switch to generator B. So you have that dual redundancy there. This particular installation, uh, we have the optional 40 amp external alternator, which gives you a third power source, conceivably uh, able to power both the engine and the airframe um, by itself. Um, you also have uh, battery backup power, which means if you didn't have this external generator and you lost all the internal generators, you could restart the engine on the battery and run it for a time uh, just off the battery on the emergency or backup power. So very sophisticated package, um, fully redundant, two injectors per cylinder. That is, um, I think, unique. The, uh, the other engines that I know of that have electronic fuel injection, aircraft engines, uh, do not actually have two injectors per cylinder. Uh, and of course you've got dual ignition, with two ignition systems, one spark plug top and one bottom. Uh, so a lot of redundancy. Very, very sophisticated engine. Yeah, so the kit is offered as a firewall forward package. So you would buy the, the standard airframe from Vans for the RV9, build that, you can buy fast build or the regular RV9 airframe and then we'll supply the firewall forward package. So from the firewall back the airplane is stock with the exception of the dorsal fin which is included in our firewall forward package even though it's after the firewall. Um, and, and then our package is very complete so you're going to get all the cowlings. The cowlings will be made of carbon and epoxy um, so as light and stiff as possible. You'll get a brand new uh, 916 IS engine, uh, and that engine through uh, in North America does come with a five-year, 2,000-hour um, warranty, very strong warranty as part of the package. Uh, you also get the dual electric fuel pump package. You get the custom stainless steel exhaust system. You get all the coolers, the uh, liquid cooler, the inner cooler, the oil cooler, um, all the baffling, all the hoses. Uh, so it's a very, very, uh, very complete package. And uh, I should mention it's significant. We do include the three blade MT, constant speed hydraulic prop, and the governor uh, as well. So it's, and the spinner. So all that is included in the package. We estimate uh, the package is gonna sell for about 110,000 
with everything.